Hello, I'm Pastor Hank, and I'm so happy that you've tuned into the program today. I'm just believing God to use me to, to say something that helps you and blesses you. You know, as we begin today, I, I'd like to just pray for you. I, I don't know what you've been going through or what you might be going to go through this coming week, but God does, and, and he already has all, all those areas covered. He already knows everything you're going to need, and he's already given that to you. So if you would, let me just pray for you as we begin. Father, I thank you for everyone that's tuned into this program today. And Father, I ask you just now to settle our minds and let us hear what you would say to us through your Holy Spirit. We love you and we trust you. And I just believe you, God, to touch everyone that's listening to this program today. And I pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Hey, you know, I want to be a blessing to you, and, and I want God to bless you. And, you know, I know that the key to that is all of us getting closer to God. If I can say something or do something that helps you, that strengthens your relationship, that draws you a little bit closer to Him, if I can say something to do that, see, the closer we get to God, the more knowledge that we have of Jesus, the more blessings manifest in our life. And I know God wants to do big things for you. And, you know, he's already, he's already provided everything you'll ever need. I'm going to share part of a message here where I was talking about uh, the parable of the Great Supper. And uh, the phrase in there that I really like was he said, uh, go tell them, go tell them that it's all ready and ask them to come. Let me share part of this message with you and, and I'll be right back and share some more with you. I want to read you something out of Luke chapter 14. It's a parable of the Great Supper. Jesus told it, and, and I'll just read it all to you here. It says, Now when one of those who sat down at the table with him heard these things, he said to him, Blessed is he who shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. And then he said to him, a certain man gave a great supper and invited many and sent his servant at supper time to say to, to those who were invited, Come, for all things are now ready. But they all with one accord began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have brought a, bought a piece of ground and I must go and see it. And I, and I asked that you have me excused. And others said, oh, I've, uh, I've bought five yoke of oxen, and I have, I'm going to test them. And, and I asked that you excuse me. And then the, the, still another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I can't come. So that the servant came and reported these things to his master. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the, of the city and bring in the poor and the maimed and the lame and the blind. And then the servant said, Master, it's all done as you've commanded, and still there is room. Then the master said to the servant, Go out into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. For I say to you that none of these men who were invited shall taste of my supper. That my house may be filled. Uh, <coughs> Holy Spirit, help me today to say what you want to say and help me separate that stuff in my mind right now. I remember, I remember when I was a little kid, and we lived in Galveston, which uh, we want to remember all these folks down there now. They're, uh, they're, they're having a hard time, and I uh, want to remember them and, and uh, pray for them, and, and I'm sure we'll be, we'll be do, doing something in the near future here to help them. Uh, I, I always, if you've been around a while, I always wait. I want to talk to somebody personally there that I know for sure they're putting stuff in the hands of people, but... Uh, but we're going to be we're going to be helping them here in the near future. If you want to uh, donate anything for that, then you can just mark it, let it be known. But but anyway, I, we we lived in Galveston, and we'd come up here in the summertime and stay with my grandparents. And and uh, I, I just loved coming up here because my, my grandparents had a farm out in Duquesne, and 
they had gardens, and boy, we just got to eat all this good stuff. But I remember my grandmother, she'd always be in there cooking. All afternoon, she'd be in there cooking. And then I'd hear her say, Dinner's ready. Come and get it. Come and get it. I guess that's the, the just of what we want to say today is that dinner's ready. Dinner's ready. You know, Jesus, when he, when he told this story, it had implications to, to, the, to the children of Israel, and, and, and he was telling them because, uh, because most of them did not receive him, and he was kind of, uh, kind of using this illustration to, to let them know that, you know, hey, the, the ones that were invited didn't come, or the ones that I was sent here for, you didn't, you didn't receive me, so now we're going to go out and get the others, in which... I'm glad he did because I'm one of the others. How about you? But but even though that was a uh, that was a uh, a lesson for the children of Israel, uh, I, how many know that everything Jesus said and every part of this word, if we want to, we can apply this to our lives. It's all important to us. And uh, I, I just uh, I just I just had that phrase in my mind. Dinner's ready. It's all, it's all ready. Come and get it. Second Peter 1 says, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as his divine power has given to us all things, all things that pertain to life, and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by his glory and virtue by which have been given to us exceeding great and precious promises that through these we may be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption of this world through the lust one translation says here he has given us every thing I guess if we could get one truth in our mind it would be to realize that Jesus has already done everything we need everything we need has already been given to us been provided for us I, I love Paul when he was talking to Timothy in, in 1 Timothy in the 6th chapter he said Command those who are rich in this present age. I guess, I guess that means that some folks are supposed to be rich. Huh? It says, command those who are rich. Now, that would have been a good time for you to say, well, that's me he's talking about. Huh? See, you, 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 got, you need to change your thinking. You need to start seeing yourself different. You need to start seeing yourself who you are in Christ Jesus instead of like a stepchild and just somebody just, uh, you know, sitting in the back of the bus all the time. You need to, you need to realize who you are, man. You're somebody. Huh? And Jesus paid a price so you could be somebody. Huh? Every time I pull up in my driveway, Pam can tell you, Every time I pull up my drive, I look and I say, some rich folks live there. <laughs> huh? Well, you said that's, that's kind of, no, I'm just prophesying. Huh? I'm just telling it like it is. Huh? Anyway, I asked him to take me where I'm supposed to go, so. But he says, Command those of you who are those who are rich in this present age. Now here's the but or the not to be haughty, nor to trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who gives us richly all things to enjoy. Get that message. God doesn't want you to not have stuff but he wants you to have stuff and worship him because he gave it to you. Huh? But I love that because one translation says, who richly gives us everything to enjoy. 
everything to enjoy. I, 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 I mentioned my coming up here for the summers whenever we were kids, and, 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 and you don't realize the, the, the impact of that statement that I made when I, when I would hear grandmother say, it's ready, come get it. You see, uh, we, we, always, we always had some stuff to eat when we were growing up kids, but sometimes it was very limited in what we had. And, 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 and you know, my mother, she, 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 she worked, and, and, and the reason we would have to come up in the summertime most of the time is so she could save up money so we could go back there and she could send us through school that year. Nobody here has ever had a rough, have you? Huh? But, but, but so, so whenever we would come, see, the things that, that everybody takes for granted were big things to my sister and I. Because, I mean, we didn't have all the vegetables out of the garden. We didn't have all the, the, the cows that had been butchered and the chickens that had been butchered. And, and, and we didn't have all that stuff there. I mean, sometimes we had some beans and rice. I love beans and rice, you know. We didn't eat cornbread down there. We ate rice, okay? And, and, and you know, and, 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 but, but, but I want you to understand, see, because when, when, we, came, uh, when we came up, it was, it was like, like stepping into, wow, because there was all kinds of things to eat. You take that for granted if you, unless you've been in a time when you didn't have anything to eat. But we came out of our, you know, and, and my grandparents weren't rich, but they sure seemed rich to me. And we came out of, out of one, uh, uh, one setting into another setting. And, you know, that's kind of the way it is with God. We all come out of the lost, come out of the hopeless, come out of the helpless we all come out of the, the 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 circumstances of life dominating us and 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 ruining our lives and the the crisis is in it. We, we all come out of all that hardship and and heartache and we step into to god's realm and it's like wow i mean that's the way it should be so many times we're coming in, we're coming into God's realm, and we're still trying to bring all that other stuff with us. See, I want to tell you how bad I had it when I was a kid. I want to tell you what the doctor said. I want to tell you how bad my diagnosis is. I want to tell you because if I can tell you enough stuff here, then maybe I can get some kind of response out of you. But hold it. God says, why don't you respond in faith? Why don't you step into this thing? Step into this thing and, and realize... Wow, look what God's done. Lorraine and I were talking a while ago, and she said something about it's a good day. I said, they're all good. Some are better, but they're all good. I'm believing today is one of your better ones. How about that? I, I, I just want us to, to, to begin to, we, we, can, we can limit ourselves with our thinking, or we can step into what God has for us. In Ephesians, chapter, 10, chapter 2, verse 10, he says, we read part of this in the communion, but, but it says, says uh, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us. See, see well, you understand you've got a heavenly Father that loves you He's been waiting. He's been waiting for all these years to have somebody that he could show his kindness to. He's been waiting to have somebody that he could be Abba Father to. Been waiting to have somebody that would see what he had, what he had offered them and would take advantage of that and then would be grateful to him because of it. Verse 10 says that we were... We, we're His workmanship, that He created us in Christ. He created us so that we could walk 
in all the good works that he prepared beforehand. You ought to, you ought to circle that verse. And you ought to go home and you ought to keep reading it until you get a revelation of it. Because that's how we, that's how we, that's how we uh, grow. That's how we receive. It's through our knowledge of Him. As our knowledge of Him grows. As our knowledge of His goodness grows. We're able to step into that. Our faith is strengthened. Our faith is stronger. You understand faith? Faith isn't something that we pull off the shelf to make God do something. No, faith is my relationship with Him. Faith is as I walk with Him and, and, and this relationship grows and, 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 and I, I, I realize His love and His affection for me and as this thing grows and gets bigger and I just love Him more and more and more and it isn't that I love Him, it's that He first loved me. And, 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 and my faith as this grows in me, my faith trust Him more. My faith doesn't let the circumstances get me down. My faith causes me to look towards Him instead of towards the natural. It doesn't make me ignore the natural. I want you to understand. I had a friend once that had a shop. This was a huge shop. This had every kind of machine every kind of tool you could imagine in there. Man, he had wood tools, lathes, all kinds. Of, he had metal, metal lathes. He had, he had a mill machine. He had, he had all, this, all this stuff, all this. And, 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 and what was neat, you, you walked in there and you just went, wow. And this guy, this guy could make anything you needed. I mean, if you needed furniture, he could make it for you. If you needed a part for something, he could make it. If you could go in there, even if a part wasn't invented, even if, there, even if one didn't exist, if you could go in there and you could tell him what you needed and what you were, what you were needing it to do, he could think on it a while and he could... He could find the right tools and he could find the right piece and he could do the right drilling and he could do the right thing and he would come up with that part. Pretty neat. Now, when I'd go in there, I'd look at all the machines and all the tools and I'd go, wow. But I didn't know how to run none of them or do none of them, so I just could go, Wow. Huh? I mean, I got a philosophy. I told Greg a few years back when he bought the tree business, I said, man, don't ever buy nothing you have to work with. But, 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 and, 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 but, but this is what I want you to, what a, uh, the picture I want you to get. We stepped into this kingdom of God. Everything's in this shop, folks. Everything's in this shop. If what you need doesn't exist yet, you can make it anyway. Just figure out what it is you need, what it is you want, what it is you're trying to do with it. Do you understand? God's, God's not going to answer prayers that He's already answered. Oh, Lord, I'm praying that you heal me. Hank, haven't you looked in the Bible? Haven't you studied the Word? By my stripes, you were already healed. Well, now I don't know how to make this part, but I have to figure it out. So I go, Holy Spirit, help me figure this out. You see, if I could, if I could, if I was to walk in this guy's shop, and I, and I wanted to do something, I didn't know how to do it, he'd show me. Matter of fact, one time I bought a brand new truck back in the 70s, 
and, it, and I bought it without air because I had to get one I could afford to buy, and so I didn't have air on it. And so the first thing I realized was I'd made a mistake and I needed air, so I went out to the salvage yard, and I got, a, I got some add-on air from Larry Meadows, and he gave me all the parts and everything, and Earl Janess was our bus mechanic then. And so I went out to the bus barn, and I said, Earl... I need you to help me, man. This, I need to put this air on the, on the car. I was expecting Earl to say, okay, well, Hank, I'll put it on. Come back tomorrow and I'll have it all on for you. But you know what Earl said? He said, well, take off your coat. Roll up your sleeves. I won't put it on for you, but I'll tell you how. Can you see me in the middle of this motor? He says, Un- undo that bolt right there. I'd do it. And he said, okay, now, now put this in there. Do this. And he'd go on do it. He'd come back. No, no, do it this way. And I'd do it that way. And follow me. After a few days, I was amazed because I had put air on this brand new truck. Now, I wouldn't know how to tell you how to do it now. But, but, but man, I... And I told everybody, hey, I put the air on this thing, man. Feel how cold it is. But he told me everything to do. Now, you see, I walk in this big shop of faith, and I don't always know everything to do, but I have been given to live inside of me the very Spirit of God, and he says, I will lead you and guide you into all truth. What do you need, Hank? Well, I need this part, and, and I don't exactly know how to describe it, but I need this and this. He said, well, I know what you're talking about. Now, this is what you do. Oh, Lord, I want, I want more income. I, I, Lord, I, I, just, I, just need to, I, just, I just want to get to the end of the month and have some money left. How many has ever been where you had more month than you had money? Huh? I mean, no, it's better, to have, it's better to have money left at the end of the month than it is to have a month left at the end of the money. Am I talking to the right people? Lord, I need some, you know, and, and, and like Steve Jones says, I, I can lay on the couch and eat potato chips, but, you know, probably, probably I'm going to limit what comes to me. There might be some come once in a while, but... God, I need, I need more income. I need, he says, okay, well, now let me show you what to do. See, we're, we're, we're talking and we're praying like, Lord, send me some down. He says, Hank, it's not up here. It's already down there. All the silver and gold and diamonds and all of it's down there, Hank. Oh. Well, would you show me how to get it? Now, if it happens to be that area, the first thing he always tells me is, well, so. If you sow, it'll grow. Huh? No, I'm not, that's not the message today, but if you sow, it'll grow. Huh? I mean, that's just the way it is. But, but, but what I, what I, the, the, the picture I'm wanting us to get is, is, is when we go before God, are we asking Him to do something that He already did? See, I'm not saying we understand it. I'm not saying we know how to we know how to, to operate all the tools and all the machines in the shop. But I'm saying all the all the keys are in here. All the answers are in here. All the answers are in here. And when I begin then to have a confidence. I don't know what in the world I'm going to do. I don't know how this is. I I don't know, God, but I know you know. You know, every day I have to say, Lord, I really don't know what to do with this predicament here. I really don't know what to do with this situation here, but you do, so you just show me. Cause me to step the right places. Cause me to do the right things. Cause me to say the right things. God, you, you, you know. 
This is even down to a thing where I can't find something. I go, God, I don't know where that is, but you know exactly where it is, and if if you'll show me, I'll appreciate it. And he does. Understand what I'm saying. The concept is, Lord, give me. He says, I already gave you. See, it's a, it's a whole lot it's a whole lot different in the old covenant. In the old covenant, we did, and then we got. In the new covenant, he says, "I already did." Now let me show you and teach you how to got. I already did it. Now, see, see, see this this faith and this life with God isn't a run to the altar, get saved so I can go to heaven. This is an entrance into a kingdom, the kingdom of God. It's an entrance into a relationship. It's an entrance into a, into a place with God that He's always desired. It's a place with God like He made and put Adam in. Adam never had to say, Father, would you send me this? He said, it's all here. Holy Spirit's here to lead you, to lead me, and to guide us, and to show us. Now, now that's what faith is, and, and as my relationship with Him grows, I trust Him more, my confidence in Him is more. I mean, you know, when I first got saved, you might come to me if you were real smart, and you were real had a big degree, and, and, and had, knew a lot of big words, and you might come to me and get me to doubt whether God was really real or not. I mean, probably not, but you might have been able to. You had a chance to. You know, but, but I mean, after 40-some after years, I'm sorry, you're just barking at the moon. Why? Well, because my knowledge of Him has grown. Because my relationship with Him has grown. Huh? Because, because, because the, the, the longer I walk with Him and talk with Him and fellowship with Him the more I trust Him. I hope that was a blessing to you. You know, I'd like to send you the whole message because I believe it'll help you. If you're interested or want it, just give us a call and I'll make sure somebody sends you a CD of it. You know, I, I enjoy being able to, to share with you and help you. And, you know, uh, I've been trying to share the good news with you today. And, uh, you know, I'm hoping that if you're a Christian, I'm hoping that you'll take the good news and go share it with others around you. All those people you come in contact with, they, they need the Lord. They need, to be, they need to have Him in their life. So go, go share the good news. And uh, the good news to some of you, some of you listening to me, you don't know if you're right. You don't know if you died right now, you'd go to heaven. I want you to know. The Bible says whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. So right now, I'm going to say a little prayer with you. And if you don't know for sure, say this prayer with me. And if you'll say it and mean it, God will do something on the inside of you. So right where you are, bow your head and just say this. Father, I want to be saved. Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart right now. I give you my life. I want to live for you. Thank you for saving me. And I ask you to do something with my life. And I pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, I'd love to send you some information, help you get on your way with the Lord. Just uh, give us a call, and, and we'll, we'll send that to you free of charge. Hey, I, I enjoy being able to be with you every week, and I appreciate the fact that, that you tune into the program every week. I needed to tell you a, a change that's coming up in the program starting next week, September the 10th. Uh, we will we will no longer have the broadcast on Sunday morning at eight. It'll it'll only be on Sunday night at ten thirty. The TV stations had a program change, and so for a while now we're just going to be having the program in the evening. I know maybe that's a little late for some of you, but uh, you can record it and then listen to it listen to it the next day. Hey, listen, I, I appreciate getting to be with you, and and I just always want God to do something that blesses you use me to say something that touches you 
And uh, more than anything else, I want you to be closer to him than you've ever been before. So right now as we leave, I speak his blessings into your life. And I believe you, I believe you to be closer to him than you've ever been before. Hey, listen, I love you. And I look forward to talking with you next week.